Afternoon folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do today was I wanted to have a discussion about pack weight theory and a little bit about my theories behind the weight of your equipment which equals the weight of your pack. And there are lots of people out there today that count every ounce of weight in their pack and that mentality is nothing new. That mentality has been around since the late 1800s when Nesmick wrote his book, Woodcraft and Camping, and probably before that as well. So what I wanted to do today was I wanted to kind of read an excerpt from Nesmick's book, if you'll indulge me for a moment, to read straight from this book. And then I want to discuss that and discuss my mentality behind his thought process. You have to excuse me for the glasses. What it says is that why a shrewd businessman who goes through with a guide and makes a forest hotel his camping ground nearly every night should handicap himself with a five-pack pack basket full of gray woolen and gum blankets, extra clothing, pots, pans, and kettles, with a nine-pound ten bore and two rods, yes, and an extra pair of heavy boots hanging astride the gun as well, is one of the things that I shall never understand. My own load, including canoe, extra clothing, Blanket bag, two days rations, pocket axe, rod, and knapsack never exceeded 26 pounds. And I went prepared to camp out any and every night. So, let's dissect this a little bit and talk about it a little bit of a time, at a time. And kind of look at what he's actually saying here before we go further into the conversation. He talks about people from the city taking vacations. He's talking about the vacation camper. And at the turn of the last century, there was a big movement in recreational camping, a recreation away from the life and the hustle and bustle of city. And that's an important thing to understand because Nesmick was a great innovator of his time when it came to ultralight packing and the personal experience, stewardship of the land, and all of those things Nesmick was an innovator of his time when it came to that thought process. So looking at what he's talking about was carried, and bear in mind that this was not carried by the person doing the camping the majority of the time. In the case he's speaking of here, there were guides, as said in this text, and porters as well. But he talks about a five-peck pack basket. And let's look at that first. The pack basket generally speaking, would have looked very similar to this. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is, when he talks about a five peck pack basket, does that mean that the pack basket weighs five pecks or that it's capable of holding five pecks? So we first have to understand what is a peck. A peck is equal to two U.S. gallons in dry weight, and a peck was one quarter of a bushel. So breaking that down into something simple as a gallon of milk, a gallon of milk weighs 8 pounds. So a peck weighed approximately 16 pounds, and a 5-peck pack basket would have either weighed or held 80 pounds, depending on how you take his text. He could have put 80 pounds of gear in here, or it would have been capable of holding 5 pecks. And 5 pecks may have been, you know, a bushel and a little more of apples. In, in the case of agricultural produce, and that's what pecks were used for and bushels most of the time was agricultural dry goods and produce such as wheat, fruits, and things of that nature. So to put 80 pounds in that pack basket, is that reasonable? Could you do that very easily? Well, it depends on what you were carrying in there. He talks about having woolen gear in there. He talks about having pots, pans, extra clothing, kettles. All of those things, depending on what they were made of, could have made up quite a bit of weight. If you were carrying cast iron and heavy wool blankets or heavy wool clothing, it could make an 80 pound weight very simple in this basket. Were this basket capable of holding all of those implements? I tend to believe that he's probably talking about the 80 pounds or the five peck basket as the capability of holding a little more than a bushel in dry weight. Not necessarily that it weighed 80 pounds. But I do believe from his text that he's talking about them carrying way more than they actually need. And one of the things that I teach in my basic class to my students, 
and going back to the 80-20 rule of life that I talked about early on in my videos, probably 20% of what we carry every day in our packs is really 80% of what we need. So looking at the words of Nesmic and the way he speaks about the weight carried by a person going out to recreate, understanding that no matter what he's saying, he's really saying that they're carrying too much weight. They're carrying a lot of things that they really don't necessarily need. And his philosophy of ultralight camping was exactly the same as ours is today. Take what you need and nothing more. So how do you decide how much weight is what you need? And we need to talk about that and we need to understand that for ourselves because it is an important consideration when you're going to pack that weight yourself. You don't have guides, you don't have porters. You are carrying this weight yourself over distance. A lot of what we don't look at when we think about Nesmic and we think about his writings, and when I look at historical things, I try to delve as deeply into them as I can and look beyond the documents to see what the mentality of that person would have been. And in Nesmic's case, he was of not the best health. He barely weighed over 100 pounds, and he was just over 5 feet tall. So for him to carry something that weighed 40 or 50 pounds may have been impossible, no matter how comfortable it would have made him. He was very adamant about finding the lightest weight, smallest type gear and kit that he could get away with for his scenario or for his situation or for his usability. And I think that when we pack our kit and we pack our gear, the three things that we need to look at, and I've spoke about this in past videos is, A, core temperature control. Does what I have packed in this kit directly affect my ability to control my core temperature? B, comfort. Are the things in this kit that I have packed going to allow me a comfortable night's sleep? Because that's the most important thing to me in a longer term scenario. If I'm going out for a week into the woods to camping and recreate or whatever the case I'm doing, fishing, hunting, whatever it is, if I plan on being out there for more than a couple of days, I better be able to get a good night's sleep to function properly. So comfort is very important. And the last thing I think about is convenience. What's going to make it easier for me in camp life? So core temperature control, comfort, and convenience are how I look at the things in my pack, as well as how multifunctional is each individual piece of my kit, which goes back to the 5C and 10C mentality of thinking. Again, looking at kit or kit items that others carried throughout history. And talking about Nesmic in this video, we have to understand that his kit was proportionally sized to his stature. And I think that's an important thing that a lot of people don't look at. Nesmic was barely over five feet tall, so he was able to carry smaller items to use to affect his comfort, to affect his core temperature control, and things would be more convenient for him if they were smaller because they would be lighter for him to carry. His tarp that he carried on a general basis when he was tramping, as he called it, was five foot by six foot. A person today that's six foot tall or six foot two or six foot four, unlike me who's only five eight, is not going to be able to get a good comfortable night's sleep under a tarp that's only six feet in length and five feet in width. It's not going to happen. The bigger the tarp, the more it's going to weigh. At the same time, a bigger statured person is going to tend to use bigger, heavier tools than a person who is small. It's very much like you handing a knife to your 12-year-old child and the knife that they can handle versus the knife that you can handle or the ax that they can handle versus the ax that you can handle. If you're a frail, smaller stature, you're going to require smaller tools that may get the exact same job done but are not as comfortable or as usable for someone of larger stature. And that goes to blankets, that goes to tarps, it goes to tools, it goes to everything in general. So let's take a look at, let's take a look at a couple items really fast. This is a antique Wetterlings crafting ax, and this one has been rehandled. It is about the length of this Scout backpack. And this would have been about the size of what Nesmic described as a pocket axe. His axe was double bitted. He preferred the double bit axe where I preferred the single bit with the hammer pole. 
but the weight and size proportion is nearly the same as what Nesmic would have carried. Now, I prefer myself to carry something that's more substantial. I prefer to carry something like this 17 inch trapping axe, which again, larger size equates to more weight. But this is more comfortable for me to wield than this is. Anything that I'm gonna do with this, I can do with my knife because again, my knife is also larger. That goes to what's comfortable for your body size, your stature, and your build. So the ax already shows you that this tool is much larger, but it is a hand carryable ax. It's not a felling ax. It's a bedroll type length ax that could be slid into the bedroll very easily, but yet much bigger than the ax that was carried by Nesmic that he called his pocket ax. Okay, so let's talk about Nesmic's knife. Okay, this is a fairly good replica of a Nesmic style knife. This was made by Battle Horse Knives. This is a Pathfinder series knife. But this was very reminiscent of the Nesmic style blade. And the important thing to understand about this, going back to Nesmic's size and stature, is that this knife was really designed after the most common knives along the frontier and in the woods over time, which were butchering style knives. And this is a butcher knife a hand forged butcher knife. I have no idea what period of time this is from, probably 19th century. But you can see that the top here is very similar to this. And you can see that it has a belly on it, just like this. Basically, this is a squatted down version, a little bit wider, of a traditional English style butcher knife. And English butcher knives are on just about every trade ledger that you can find as far as being stocked and traded along the frontier from New England all the way to the West Coast over the period of time in the frontier from the 1750s all the way to the 1890s. These knives were the most common type knives along with the French trade knife. Which brings me back to the knife that I most commonly carry, which is the Pathfinder Scout. And the Pathfinder Scout is designed after a French era trade knife. But you can see that it's much larger than the Nesmic knife. But that larger knife allows me to do things that I can't do with a smaller knife that would require an ax. I can do larger tasks for processing wood and things like that that I don't necessarily have to use my ax for, saving my ax for the bigger chopping tasks for actually cutting down lumber type material or four inch type saplings that I'm gonna use for structural material. So I prefer to carry a little bit bigger belt knife. Nesmic preferred something smaller, but again, his stature was much different than mine. He was five foot three, barely over 100 pounds. I'm five foot eight at 200 pounds. So there's a big difference there as far as the weight and the stature of the person carrying the tool. And that's a very important thing for us to look at. Let's talk about, again, the pocket knife or the folding knife. Nesmic carried a fairly small folding knife. This one is a case trapper. It's not exactly like what Nesmic carried. Nesmic carried like a three blade stockman type knife, more of an imperial looking knife, but this is a reminiscent of the size and it's proportionate to the size of the other tools that he carried. And that's important to understand. He had a smaller, more delicate carving tool. He had a butchering type knife and then he had a pocket ax for doing chopping, processing firewood, things of that nature. Whereas myself, because I have the larger ax, I can carry the larger knife, and then I prefer to carry a larger pocket knife as well. I carry like a case hunter. So the, pocket, the blades on this knife are much larger than the blades on this knife by comparison, but they give me everything I need for a small, fine carving knife and they also give me the ability to have a bird trout style blade on here as well for processing different types of game. So the proportion of my kit is proportionate to the largest tool, which is my ax. And it's exactly the same as Nesmic. He proportioned his kit to the size of his largest tool, which was his ax. This kit is going to weigh much less than the kit that I carry. There's no question about that. I think what we really need to take away from this conversation is that everyone's kit is individual. And your individual kit is built around several things. A, your physical stature. B, your physical conditioning. And C, your physical health. 
all of those things have to be considered when you're building your kit. And to say that you're going to build a kit that weighs 26 pounds or 36 pounds or 46 pounds is not as important as do the items in that kit fit you? Do they function the way you want them to? Do they do what you need them to do? Are they going to cover the aspects of core temperature control, comfort, and convenience for you? And are you in good enough physical condition to carry the weight of the chosen items that you have in your kit? And physical conditioning is a very important part of this whole thing that is largely ignored in the bushcraft community today. If you're going to take gear and carry it over distance, you have to be in decent physical condition or the limitations of your kit are going to be such that you cannot carry certain items that you think would benefit you better because they weigh too much. Weight is not as important to me in the long run as how well that tool is going to perform, how well that piece of kit is going to protect me and my core temperature, and how useful that piece of kit is going to be to me in the longer term. I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School. I thank you for joining me out here today for this quick short discussion video. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our business, for our school, for our family, friends, affiliates, and instructors. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.